So this is a continuation of the video we began. And then in the previous video, um, we talked about blood supply to the whole body. And um, we got to, um, we went through the slide and then we got to the arm. So we talked about from the, from the aorta, we talked about the thoracic aorta. We talked about the subclavian up to the fingers. So next we are going to look at the abdominal aorta and then all the GI blood supply and next we'll look at the blood supply to the lower limbs and then we'll come to the head later on and that will complete our chapter on blood supply. So let's begin um, with circulatory system too. So if you look at this carefully, um, we had established that the abdominal aorta has several blood supply so this is how it we looked at it then so we said the abdominal aorta has the lateral branches which we talked about and then we talked about we are about to talk about this the anterior branches so the anterior branches the very first one the diaphragm will be here and then the very first one below the diaphragm the anterior will be the celiac trunk next will be this one the sma and this will be the ifa so we'll look at all these three in this video um, and then this is it so um, the celiac trunk has three branches okay it gives three branches but before we even look at the celiac trunk we have to know that the anterior branches are celiac trunk SMA and IMA the celiac trunk supplies the foregut the SMA the midgut and then the I made a hindgut. Now, where does the foregut begin? From the esophagus up to the the second part of the um, the duodenum, and the SMA begins from the second part of the duodenum up to the um, the anterior two thirds of the transverse colon, and then the IMA begins from the um, posterior one third of the transverse colon up to the um, the rectum, which is the the above the pectinate line so now um we are going to take the celiac trunk and then we'll look at these are its branches so we have the common hepatic the splenic artery and then the left gastric artery so here it is we will see it over here we'll have this our um celiac trunk over here and this will be its first branch the common hepatic going to, towards the liver and then the next branch will be the left gastric branch which is going to the left um, the lesser curvature the upper part of the lesser curvature and then to the esophagus and then we had said that if esophagus has two uh, arteries one from the the thoracic aorta and then the other from this uh, celiac trunk which is the left gastric artery branch of the celiac trunk and that would be the esophageal branch so if somebody has um let's say the person has portal hypertension and is bleeding from lower esophagus the most likely vessel that is uh, bleeding will be this will be the esophageal branch which comes from the left gastric artery so let's take note of that also when they have a portal hypertension and then there's pressure in this um, vessel i mean the, this is a venous side but this one is the artery but i mean if we have the venous side and there's a pressure in it and there'll be pressure in this splenic um, vein as well so the bleeding will come from the esophageal vein rather not the artery so please take note and then if you look at this diagram the vessels take the shape of the stomach right you can see here it takes the shape of the stomach right yeah so um let's take them one after the other you will see that we will look at other images so that it makes more sense but let's go through this image first so first of all you want to look at the lesser curvature um the lesser curvature we divide it into two the upper part is here this is the lower part of the lesser curvature so the upper part is supplied by the left gastric artery and then this extends into the esophagus because the esophagus joins the upper part at the cardia and now the next branch is going to be the splenic artery the splenic artery passes posterior to the stomach the stomach could be in this area the splenic artery passes posterior to it and then when it gets outside the stomach on the greater curvature side um, it divides here it gives us a short gastric artery that goes into the fundus and then the 
gastro epiploic artery and epiploic also means omentum so gastro omental artery is the same thing and then it continues into the the spleen here so the spleen will be lying here and also now we have the common hepatic the common hepatic will divide into several branches one of them is the hepatic artery uh, proper this is a hepatic artery proper and then this will divide into two since the liver has two lobes to so the left branch and then the right branch the right branch also gives the cystic artery which goes to the um, the gallbladder here as we can see um, now the common hepatic also divides into um, so it divided into two the hepatic artery will be this short part here and this will be the hepatic artery proper right so this common hepatic from here up to here then here the div it divides into two one is a hepatic artery this is a short segment here that's a hepatic artery and continuous here is a gastroduodenal artery then this hepatic artery will also divide into two give us the hepatic artery proper this is a proper and this one will be the right gastric artery here so just take note of the division so this is a right gastric artery so right gastric artery will, will supply the the remainder of the of the uh, lesser curvature because this applies the upper part and is the lower part and now this continues to give us the gastro duodenal as the name suggests stomach and the duodenal now the gastro duodenal was divided into two and give us the right gastro epiploic so if you see the omentum the omentum lies in this area let's see you see the omentum over here the omentum lies over here so this vessel here the right gastro epiploic or gastro omental artery this is it here this is it right here and then this was the left one that came from the splenic artery over here and then they join the anastomose over here therefore injury to this this will supply it injury to this this will also supply so there, there will not be any problem and so if you see it over here there is a celiac trunk and then this will be our can you guess left gastric artery here supplying this part of the left uh, the lesser curvature and this will be our right gastric artery coming from the um, hepatic artery and then we'll have the splenic artery here which is passing posterior to the stomach and then give us the short gastric artery going to the fundus and then here will be the right gastroepiploic uh, sorry left gastroepiploic artery here and then this will be the splenic artery going to the spleen right here yeah and now let's look at um over here you see that we'll, um, ideally you have the the pancreas lying on this area here the pancreas you can see the head of the pancreas here so this is the head of the pancreas the pancreas lies on this whole area so the ga uh, gastro duodenal artery will supply part of the pancreas part of the duodenum and then give us the left sorry the right gastro epiploic artery so let's go to the image again so you see it's over here the gastro duodenal divide into the right gastro epiploic and also gives us the superior pancreatic duodenal artery superior because it's just applying the upper part of it so the pancreas uh, will be divided like this so this whole thing will be divided into two like this so you divide, draw a straight line and divide it into two so the superior the superior pancreatic duodenal artery will supply the upper part here this whole area upper and then the superior mesenteric artery which we'll look at next will supply the lower part so just take note that the pancreas the head of the pancreas the duodenum all take blood supply from both the celiac trunk and then the sma okay just take note so um the let's go back here um the superior pancreatic duodenal will divide into two we have the posterior branch we said we we'll divide the pancreas into two but we have the posterior branch and then the anterior branch so this should make sense posterior one will go to the back of the pancreas one will come anterior to the pancreas and this is our omentum and it's the same as the epiploid right okay now let's continue the same image here okay now uh, next one will be this the superior mesenteric artery so this superior mesenteric artery as we said is supplying from where the 
the celiac trunk left off so the celiac trunk will leave us somewhere here and then the SMA superior mesenteric artery which is here will continue up to the transverse part of the the first two thirds of the transverse colon so we'll begin from here so let's go to the SMA so the SMA yeah over here let's use this image so this is the SMA over here as we can see this is the SMA so it's going to supply us from wherever see let me just be sure that it's, okay this is the celiac trunk over here as we can see and then we can see the SMA over here this is the SMA here then later we'll see the IMA also so this sma we said is going to supply all the small intestine from the second part of the duodenum all the small intestine up to the first two thirds of the transverse colon so this transverse colon continues this way so first two thirds of it of the transverse colon that's where the sma would and this image does not really uh, show the picture well so just like the shape of the of the the gut um, will have the inferior pancreatic duodenal artery continuing because we said the gastroduodenal gives us the superior pancreatic duodenal which gives us the anterior and posterior this inferior pancreatic duodenal will also give us the inferior and anterior inferior so it will be an posterior and anterior inferior pancreatic duodenal artery then next we'll go to we have the the um, all these branches over here that we'll look at them so let's look over here so this is our sma here right and then there's the inferior pancreatic duodenal artery which will give us anterior and posterior branches which are here now then from there um, we are going to get the duodenal arteries over here because from duodenum because this supplies the duodenum from duodenum we go to the jejunum right then the ileum so we have the duodenal artery here the jejunal artery we have the iliac artery right goes to the ileum and then from the ileum we'll go to the cecum right so from the cecum what we are doing is that it uh, the ileocecal junction will be here so this is the iliocolic right iliocolic branch of the sma here will give us the first of all the appendix will be at the cecum right appendix then to the posterior cecal branch the anterior cecal branch and then we'll have the ascending colic so that's the ascending colic right branch just a little bit um let's see if i'll see it in this image here so it comes this way and then give us the the the, the jejunal branch is here the ileal branch this whole thing is the ileum the ileal branch will be here then we'll have the right colic ascending here you have the ascending colic branch over here ascending colic branch here and the next thing you have the um, you have the appendicular branch which goes to the appendix here and next you have the posterior and then the anterior cecal this is a cecum here is a cecum so it was all supply so just know that the sma supplies this whole part which is a mid gut so you just divide the branches to it so we have the duodenal branch we have the we have the duodenal branch let's look at this image here yeah we have the duodenal branch then we'll have the jejunal branch we have the ilia, um, the ileal branch we'll have the cecal branch then we'll, the cecal is anterior and posterior then we have the this branch here is the appendicular branch after that we have the right colic branch which is here to supply here so let's go back we have the right colic branch which supplies the ascending colon and then we have the middle colic which will supply the transverse colon up to the first two thirds of the transverse colon here so that's the middle colic and then we finish we are done with the sma i think this is very pretty simple so SMA again the summary of SMA is that it's supplying the mid gut. Mid gut begins from the second part of the duodenum up to the first two thirds of the transverse colon. So the duodenal part of it will be the inferior pancreatic duodenal. 
Then we'll have the jejunum being next after the duodenum, jejunal branch. We have the ileum being next after jejunum. The next will be the ileocecal junction, right? So that will be the ileocolic branch. Over there, we have different structures. We have the appendix over there. We have the cecum. The cecum will give it the, the back of it and then the anterior part of it. And then we'll have the ascending column, column branch, a little portion. And now from there, we'll have the whole ascending, um, ascending um, part of the colon. So ascending colon, that's the right colic branch. And then we have the middle colic, which is the transverse colon. And that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So this is it from this image. Yeah, now the IMA. So the inferior mesenteric is also supplying the hind gut. So the branches will be the continuous. So we had the right colic from the um, SMA. So we'll have the left colic this time, which is the descending, the descending colon from the IMA. And then we'll have the sigmoid artery, and then we have the superior rectal artery. Um, so let's look at that also. So this is the SMA superior mesenteric. It's supplied from duodenum up to the first two thirds, right? We said here, first two thirds. So if the first two thirds is here, then the inferior mesenteric, which is this vessel here, this is the inferior mesenteric, will supply from here the first, the last one third, right? Last one third of this transverse colon from here up to the superior rectum right superior rectum so uh, if here is our right colon right this is the right side of the colon right and then this will be the left side because left side is going into the rectum so here will be the um, the first branch of the ima will, will be the right colic artery right the right colic as we saw here the right sorry i'm sorry the first part will be the left colic because this is the right and here will be the left colic and now there will this is a sigmoid colon that is s shaped so we have the sigmoidal branch and we have the rectal branch so um it's also pre pretty simple superior rectal um yeah so this is it if you can see even though this is the vein venous part of it but if we if we assume this the artery then you can see that if this the sma is supplying up to here from the original up to the first two thirds then the last one third of the transverse colon will come from the inferior mesenteric which is here then we'll have the s part which is the sigmoid colon so the sigmoidal branch of it and then we'll have the rectal that is superior rectal part of it because the inferior rectal will come from the internal iliac so let's take note of that okay so um this is the internal iliac internal iliac it also has several branches i'm going to end this video here so that um, we treat the internal iliac also separate because it's also it's also power packed it's also like loaded by simple you just have to uh, repeat and then memorize because we have all the organs of the pelvis so i want us to look at that also uh, separately okay uh, thank you if you haven't subscribed to this channel please take time to do so and also share your comments with me and um, good luck in your studies and then we'll see you in the next video